Now, following translation, every mRNA eventually gets degraded. And uh, I'd like to emphasize three reasons why RNA turnover is actually an interesting area to look at. First, this controls the levels of mRNAs is in a common site of regulation. Obviously, if you uh, make RNAs at different rates, you'll have different concentrations, but the rate at which they are degraded has a tremendous influence on the steady state pool. Second, RNA turnover plays a significant role in de uh, defining the transcriptome by degrading many mRNAs which are aberrant. So for example, uh, mRNAs which contain nonsense codons, shown here as red, uh, so that you don't translate the entire open reading frame, are recognized and rapidly degraded in eukaryotic cells. This is a process called nonsense-mediated decay. And there are other of these types of quality control pathways which recognize and degrade uh, aberrant or non-functional mRNAs. And this probably is important in both preventing the formation of truncated proteins from this type of RNA, but in also keeping uh, the pool of mRNA in the cytoplasm uh, restricted to those which are functional and which the cell wants to uh, use to produce proteins. Finally, RNA turnover also plays roles in contributing to defense against virus and parasitic elements, such as retrotransposons. Uh, these include things like uh, antiviral microRNAs or RNAs L, and even just competition between the general decay pathway and uh, viral function in many cases. Now, work over the last uh, 20 years really has defined the ways by which RNAs are degraded in eukaryotic cells. Uh, eukaryotic RNAs, when they're born, have this three prime poly A tail, as well as the cap structure on their five prime end. In the first step of degradation, this three prime poly A tail is shortened by a variety of nucleases. And the two most uh, important nucleases that I'll be mentioning are a complex called the CCR4 knot complex, which is shown as the blue here and a second complex referred to as PAN2 and PAN3, which seems to play a more minor role. Following deadenylation, mRNAs can be degraded from the three prime end by a complex called the exosome, which takes advantage of various cofactors to degrade mRNAs, or you know, what's a more common uh, degradation pathway, mRNAs are then decapped, uh, where the cap structure is removed by a decapping enzyme, followed by five prime to three prime degradation of the RNA. Now, one of the unresolved issues is the uh, distribution of mRNAs between these two general RNA decay pathways. In yeast cells, where more of these experiments have been done, it's clear that this decapping uh, in 5' prime to 3' prime decay pathway is the prevalent pathway by which RNAs are degraded. But we really don't understand in more complex eukaryotic cells, particularly like mammals, uh, which of these decay pathways predominates and whether that's influenced by different cell types or different signaling pathways or even the diversity of different mRNAs. And this is an area of ongoing research uh, currently. So there are two general pathways of RNA degradation, deadenylation leading to three prime decay or decapping and five prime decay. There are also specialized pathways by which mRNAs are degraded. Uh, so again, another example of quality control, if mRNAs don't have a stop codon, they're recognized and degraded extremely rapidly from the three prime end without any deadenylation. Okay. This is a process called uh, nonstop decay. Similarly, RNAs which are recognized as having nonsense codons, at least in uh, simple eukaryotic cells, are subject to very rapid decapping, so bypassing this normal step of uh, deadenylation. And a third and growing class of RNA uh, degradation events which are specialized are endonuclease cleavage events, which tend to be targeted to specific subclasses of mRNAs that have specific sequences or elements which are recognized and then trigger endonuclease cleavage. Two examples of this I want to highlight. One is uh, cases where microRNAs can trigger cleavage of mRNAs, okay, and this has been described now in a variety of different uh, eukaryotic cells, most prevalently in plants, but also observed in uh, mammalian cells as well. Another class of endonuclease cleavage is yet another of these so-called quality control systems where when ribosomes are translating down a message, if they get stuck for any reason, so they're stuck in elongation, that triggers cleavage of the mRNA to rescue that dead end complex uh, and degradation of the um, two pieces. So an unresolved area here is, you know, how diverse are these types of endonuclease cleavages in eukaryotic cells, and uh, how common are these uh, distinct uh, different classes? <coughs> 